Yo, what's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to the podcast, another episode of Caffeine and Cream with your man, Connor Cardenas. And like usual, before we get into it, I just want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my boys and ladies over at Steel Mill Coffee for letting us use the space for the podcast. So if you're ever in Oceanside, head over to Steel Mill Coffee, go and say what up to all my homies, Anna, Giles, Lil C, Shay, and Riley, and go enjoy an amazing cup of coffee, guys. And on that note, if you haven't already, head over to www.caffeineandgreenroasting.com, all one word, and you can go ahead and check out my coffees because we're roasting now. And that's the Issa blend. And we also got the Tyler Schaefer, the Southside Pro Coffee Bag. It's a limited edition Guatemala Weiwei Tenango, and it's super, super buttery. It has a little bit of cherry flavor, a little bit of caramel, and a little bit of chocolate. It's really, really awesome. And it's only for a limited time, guys. So head on over to caffeineandgreenroasting.com and get your bag today. My guests today are none other than the long-awaited arrival of my boys, Hawthorne Coffee and Compa Coffee Roasters. That's right. I mean, two different companies, but owned by the same man. That's Dylan Redman I'm talking about. And then the return of my man, Jay Friedman. That's right. He's come back to the podcast uh, so many times as Sprocast and just on his own when he was just uh, barista at Hawthorne. So guys, this has been in the works for a really, really long time. I've wanted to have them on the show probably for about two years now. So I was really stoked to have them on. And Dylan was actually unable to make it just because, you know, with the, 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 the pandemic and everything, we had him on a Zoom call, and then we also had Jay in person at the, at the cafe. So guys, please enjoy this as much as I did, and without further ado, my homies, Dylan Redman, Jay Friedman, Hawthorne Coffee, and Compa Coffee Roasters. This is your time to shine, homies. Let's go. Give me ca- ca- caffeine and green. It's your boy Connor. What's good? Good, good. Cap, cap, caffeine and green. Caffeine and green. And we are live. Yes, my man. We got my man Jay Freeman in the house today. What up, y'all? You are back on podcast, son. Caffeine mm. and green. And then we got my man Dylan. Is your last name actually Red? It's Redmond. Redmond. Okay. And we got my man Dylan Redmond in the house. He is via Zoom. This is the first time I've actually done a person in studio and then a person on Zoom call. So this, uh, you know, this is a very interesting time. Just 2020 I'm, things? This is some 2020 <laughs> shit if I've ever seen, man. I swear to God. But I love it. Mm-hmm. And I'm really happy that you made it, Jay. Dylan, thank you so much for being here, sir. Yeah, thank you, guys. Hell yes. All right. Well, I'm going to, I, you know, Jay knows. He's been on the show multiple times just as him, him, himself. And then also with the Sprocast, That's the right. infamous Sprocast. That's but right. now, sir, you have returned to, uh, to Caffeine and Green now as a roaster mm-hmm. for Compa Roasters. That's right, Compa Coffee Roasters. Compa Coffee Roasters. And you were also a barista at Hawthorne Coffee, which yes, sir. is like the parent company of Compa. Mm-hmm. Correct. Well, that's like, I guess you could call it our flagship store. Flagship store. That's like our cafe. That's our home where we serve our coffee. Okay. But our roasting division is called Compa Coffee Roasters. All right. And Dylan, you are Yo. you are the owner of Hawthorne and Compa Coffee Roasters as well? Yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. Dude, that is I mean, this is all beautiful. I mean, I'm super glad that you made it on the podcast now because I mean, Jay has been here so much and like I go to Hawthorne. I don't know if they tell you, Dylan, but I go to Hawthorne honestly maybe 3 to 4 times a week. Yeah, I'd say that. Safe bet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. So, love the support. Appreciate Dude. it. You guys make some really good coffee. You guys do. I'm not going to lie. My we favorite, love it. My favorite drink uh, that I get at your spot is a um, coffee with some steamed whole milk and an ad shot. That's a, the, the red eye with steamed milk. It's good. It comes through and gets those brown drugs in the morning, boy. Steezy. Sorry, <laughs> man. Steezy. Loving it. Um, but for so, uh, Dylan, I wanted to ask you, you know, just jumping right into it. Why did you want to start a coffee shop? Man, um, I think it's the it's more of the business for me that started my love of this is is getting into hospitality. I, I I've been working in bars and restaurants since I was a teenager. Um, you know, over twenty years now. We'll let you do the math on that one, but. Um, yeah, it's it's something that I've just been doing for so long and I loved and I tried to get out and 
and do, you know, a grown up job or whatever you want to call it. And I always found myself drawn back to this business, drawn back to hospitality. And it kind of just landed at the same time, my opportunity to do this business when I fell in love with coffee, it all just like collided. Um, so I knew I wanted to get back into hospitality after leaving and I had just found like specialty coffee at the exact same time. It was like the perfect storm of all things happening, you know, that, that, that was perfect. So, um, yeah, it, it just, it just worked out. Uh, I love the art of coffee and I just love serving people. So it just, it collided for me. That's tight. What, you know, my next question is why Hawthorne? What, what was the, the, what do you, inspiration behind the name? Just, 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 oh, the name. Yeah. Um, well, as you know, you guys know, I'm sure that there's a billion coffee shops out there with a billion coffee shop names. So obviously naming a coffee shop isn't the easiest thing in the world, but, um, you know, we went through a lot of different ideas and back and forth and, Hawthorne is actually after the Hawthorne tree, which mm. you dig around on the internet and you found, we found some, you know, I'm Irish. So it was some Celtic mythology that my, my, the month I was born was the tree that represented that month was the Hawthorne tree. Just like, you know, I'm a Gemini, the same thing. So did some research about the Hawthorne tree on top of that. And it was, you know, it's really cool. It actually kind of looks like a coffee plant, weirdly enough. And, nice. you know, it's got red berries and green, green leaves and all that stuff. So it just kind of fell into place the same way. Rad. That's super rad. Yeah. Wow. Okay. The, that, the, the whole tree logo makes sense now when I look at it. Cause that yeah. you, I didn't know that that was why you guys had the tree as a logo. Tough. Yeah. And we just feel like, you know, the tree for us, the Hawthorne tree, at least has berries, it has thorns, it has, you know, nourishment, it has things that can hurt you. It's all about balance. And that's how we feel about everything we're trying to do is just trying to create coffee in balance. We're trying to create life in balance. The tree had a lot of balance for us as well. You know, roots, uh, branches, there's a lot of stuff that talks about balance with that. So it all kind of, it, it really, you know, worked out. It, it kicked us in the face. It, it was so obvious. Super rad, super rad. So then, as, you know, you start the coffee shop, you have been in business now for how many years? Uh, we're over five. Yeah, five and a half. Almost six, yeah. So almost six. six years, and you just started roasting this year. 2020, or was it 2019? Uh, no, I mean, we started roasting uh, at the very beginning of 2019. Oh, at the so beginning it's been of 2019. A year and a half, oh, but really, like, getting, I wanted to get, you know, I wanted to get really proficient at it before we had an introduced ourselves to the world. Um, you know, I take what we do seriously. I didn't want to just chuck it out there, uh, you know, right off the bat. So we spent a lot of time roasting and screwing up and tasting coffees and trying to figure it out. Um, oh, I love that. I love that. But, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's been, it's probably been what, you know, I don't know, Jay, what do you think? It's almost a year now full on that we've been serving our coffee exclusively. I would say it's been about a year since our coffee's taken over the bar at Hawthorne. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I, that's so, I mean, why I say I love that too is because when I was doing caffeine and green or just doing, you know, starting caffeine and green or doing any coffee shop that I used to work for, when you're trying to find your spot, especially when you guys are just learning how to roast from jump, no mentors, just going right into it. Like I can't, I can't even imagine it's so hard. It's hard when you have a mentor and then to, but the best part about failing is messing up and actually learning from the mess ups and being like, this is what this tastes like when you do this. And this is what this tastes like when you do this and airflow and uh, like flame and all these other things. It's super exciting. Like I, I almost love it more than getting good at it. It was really cool for yeah, us. Yeah, I mean, just, no, go ahead, Jake, sorry. It was cool for us because I think we had been serving coffee for so long that roasting coffee kind of seemed like this far unreachable thing. And I didn't necessarily grasp the concept, even though I was part of a podcast with other coffee roasters. I would hear them use certain terms or say certain things and I wouldn't quite, I wouldn't quite grasp the whole thing. So when Dylan came to me and said, you know, we got to start roasting. This is naturally our next step and let's get into this thing. Let's truly understand what we're serving. It was an opportunity for me to hear all of those terms and to put them in play. And furthermore, I think 
in 2020, it's easier to learn about anything than it ever has been before. Yes. We've never had this many resources. We've never had this much time on our hands to go online and to learn these things, to read these books. Um, I'm super thankful that not only did Dylan apply himself, which helped me learn because you know, if you're next to somebody applying themselves and you apply yourself then you both are learning together and that's super fun. But then we could bring the coffee back to the shop. We could taste it, what we liked, what we didn't like, and we could have conversation on why it tasted that way and what we should do moving forward. And since we spent a few months, R and D, R and D, R and D, by the time we were actually serving coffee on our bar, it was something we were proud of. And like to translate that into a conversation to our customers of like, yes, we're roasting our coffee. And by the way, like, it's pretty damn good. Like, tell me it's not. And like, <laughs> that whole, that Tight. whole, uh, time for us was super fun and super explorative and super proud and very validating is the word. Nice. Dude. I, I, yeah. Just to add on to what Jay said, like we've, I mean, we've had the good fortune of working with some awesome roasters coming up and just when we were serving coffee and we were a multi roaster doing other things we got like really good mentors ahead of us or people that were, that showed us the way. So when we were trying to, you know, we were figuring stuff out for ourselves, we really did a lot of, you know, we did a lot of it on our own. We'd read a lot of books. We roasted coffee, screwed it up. Like we said, and we always had like a good place to we're like, Hey, we want to be here. We want to be doing this. We want to be roasting it this way. And we always had like a, you know, a place that we were trying to get to. And I think we got there. Yeah, no, you guys are... I love it. I love what we're doing. I definitely would agree that you guys... I mean, I would say... I mean, this sounds like such an Elliot thing to to say, almost. But it's like, you're never really there. But you just start to understand. You know what I mean? Dude, if I'm there at 26, I'm not doing the right thing. Dude, no. It's it's so much exploring. And it's... Like tomorrow, for example, if I could share with you guys one thing that I'm really excited about. So I have like... I'm always thinking about the next coffee that I'm going to go out. So I got four samples, but they were a pound each. Big samples, yeah? So I'm roasting these samples tomorrow on like, I'm doing like eight gnarly batches of samples. Cupping them on Thursday, buying the coffee on Friday. And this is like, I'm basically going to get the coffee and I'm thinking like January, it's going to come out. So it's like, this is a, a big process, but you're starting the process and really digging into it. And... The, again, this goes back to what you guys were saying about like, you know, screwing up. Like, dude, I cannot wait to fail. And like, oh, damn, like, I, I fucked this one up. You know, or like, oh, this one tastes fire. Like, oh, I, I did this. I did this. I look at my notes and then I start to take more notes and then start to analyze these things. And it's figuring out that process and how to unlock that like uh, secret code or like uh, unlock that that. I don't know, unattainable goal almost because it's like, it's so exciting. That's what makes coffee there. It's like when you say you like, uh, you've kind of got there, it's like, you've got there now you understand it, but now there's a whole new world to explore. You know what I mean? Does that sound kind of lame? Well, that's what's, Oh my God. That's what's like, that's what it is for us. I mean, that's what, that's what, that's why we really sunk our teeth into roasting is that, you know, when I say we got there, I I didn't mean like we're there, we're done. Oh no, 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 no. We got to a place I mean, no, I, I really meant we got to a place where we feel like we're mildly understand it, you know? Yeah. And we're just, we're just going to fire ahead from here. And like, even every day it's different. Every, I mean, that's, that's the beauty of it. Every coffee is different, but even the coffee you bought, you got a big old bag of it and you're roasting it for the next month. Yeah. Every month, every week it's different. So that's, the, yeah. it's, you keep trying, but it's, it's like you said, it's that unattainable thing that you're just, you're grabbing for that ring, but you know, you probably won't ever get there, but hopefully you do. You pull that perfect shot. You roast that perfect batch. It happens every once in a while. Dude. And that's what's beautiful. I have to agree on that. Roast that perfect batch. Like I wish that could happen. I mean, I think I'm like, I feel very privileged because I get to go to the roastery and see it green. I get to cup it on the table and then I get to roast it and I get to understand what it's going through, through the roasting process, watch my curves, taste it week to week, see my logs. But my job is unique in the sense that I'm also on bar like five days a week. So as far as my coffee being served to customer, as far as me seeing a physical reaction in eyes, in face of customer drinking coffee, coffee nerd or not, I get to see it. Yeah. So I get to see 
it roasted. I get to see it brewed. I get to taste it from start to finish. And I mean, I'm not naive to the idea that there's further steps for me to take on a botany level where I go to the farm and see it as a plant. I could see it as a cherry. I could see it yeah. processed. And now we're getting all these different coffees with all these different processes from washed to natural to these this fermented Peru that we have right now. And understanding Damn. all of those processes is its own ball game. Mm. And then also trying to take it back to the cafe level and trying to make cocktails and try to make syrups and try to like mess with that whole thing. Coffee is just like this never ending Rolodex of little things that you can master and hone in. And I love it. Dude, that's damn. That's kind of crazy. Cause I, you know, being, this is like a super coffee thing to th- talk about, but one of the biggest complaints is like between roasters and baristas and not understanding they're like, you know, you need to be serving the coffee like this. And we're like, Oh, I'm doing it. You know, this gr- many grams in and this, this, this. And like, then you have to, then there's dialing in the whole th- espresso machine and that that could even like mess up the taste of your coffee so it's like you you're kind of in a very unique situation much like um siri Siri, simran yep she started off as a barista and then she made it a roaster and now she has that full the full understanding of it like i have a very i would say like basic understanding maybe medium understanding of espresso machines and like pulling shots and getting on bar like i've been on bar like i can do it i can do all my stuff i can pull shots i can dial in i can do all that but like to what you guys do or even siri simran when you guys are pulling like crazy latte art but then you can also roast coffee now it's like yo this is that's next level being on bar is where i'm most confident i think that uh dylan is a big proponent in that as an ex-bartender himself and i think he's kind of catered hawthorne towards a bartending um kind of a bar flow there for lack of better terms but that is where I'm the most confident as far as like, yo, we have 20 tickets. Let's bust out drinks. That's so much fun to be in the trenches or like whatever the hell you want to call that. In the trenches. <laughs> and like uh, other people can correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as like the roaster to barista miscommunication, a lot of that from what I hear from other companies, it feels like a lack of responsibility on everybody's part. It feels like the roaster is blaming the barista, the barista is blaming the roaster. And then there's just this lack of, there's like a miscommunication. But with me, being one of the roasters and one of the baristas, there's no miscommunicating with myself. And yeah. like, I can talk to my baristas and hey, what do you like? What do you not like? Let's talk about it. Do we have any complaints? Is, is our batch coffee too acidic, kicking back the milk? It, does the espresso need to be more acidic? We need that shit to pop. What is it that we need to do? And we can have those communications as a small team. I like that. Damn. Every time I go into that shop, everybody's super nice. Nat's always really, really nice. Will, of course. You guys hired a new guy. Like, Justin. Is that his name? Yeah. Okay. Justin. Justin. <laughs> dude, dude. Super cool. Yeah, man. Um, and then you have Trevor, right? Yeah. So, Trevor. Cool. I think a lot of the, that key there was um, only hiring people where it felt like it wasn't fucking work to work with them. Where like people just kind of naturally like, hey, what's up? Let's just do our thing. And like, that's just kind of Hawthorne's way is like, you're part of the neighborhood, man. Come in, get some coffee. It doesn't have to be weird. It doesn't have to be some crazy thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, let's hang out together. Let's let's talk coffee. Let's talk coffee. But okay, so this kind of leads me into the next thing. So, Dylan, you you said you came from uh, like hospitality and you did also bars and stuff like that. When you were setting up the when you were setting up the coffee shop, did you want to have like a flow like a bar but look like a cafe? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I. You know, what Jay was talking about earlier with, like, how we set things up and why we do what we do, like, and being a barista and learning how to pull shots and learning how to do that, I think that's probably, like, the basis of what we do is we what we want. I mean, for me, I started back in the day as a door guy, and then I was a runner, and then I was a bar back and busser and whatever for years and years and years working in these different places. Um, up to GM and like opening places and being on hiring teams for like a restaurant development company in San Diego. So for me, like I, I personally want to know how to do every job in the place because that's how, you know, that's how you understand. Like that's how there's not a miscommunication between roaster and barista because of those things. And having that, you know, what the person on dish needs, you know, what the person running food needs, you know, what the barista needs. So, when we set up, we taped out the floor. We stood over the floor, like with the tape there, practice pulling shots as I was like standing in an empty cafe or empty 
it was a hair salon before we got it. But that was, it was a hair, hair salon. Hot dog was a hair salon. <laughs> it was like a I don't know. It was like yeah, they had there was some, I think it was like a barber shop or hair salon or I don't know what they did there, but yeah, it was definitely not set up for what we're doing. <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah, we just I just I taped out the floor. We set up nooks. We I ran through like making a drink fake with tape on the floor standing there to see how it felt um you know i think when you are deep and you're running like a bunch of drinks the the wasted movements is what turns a you know a cocktail or a cocktail or coffee from three or you know three minutes out to seven minutes out and you know it doesn't need to be like that we can make amazing coffee and still do it fast that's there's nothing stopping anybody from doing that I like that. Damn. So, I actually just kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> Dude. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. That's, uh, so, when you talk about learning every position, in, um, or learning every position, I guess, if you would, in the cafe, uh, I only see you and Jay at the, at the roastery. So, who's, is Jay your head roaster, or are you the head roaster? Um, I mean, I don't know. We don't, I don't want to really put labels on anything. I'm not like about that really, but just a roaster, you know, I, 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 I've set up, you know, I've done a lot of the research ahead of time. We're in a weird time with, with COVID obviously. Yeah. So we're not, uh, you know, we're not running normally where we would have more people there doing different things, but, um, yeah, I guess, you know, I've, I set up the pace. I set the pace on this. Uh, I started doing the research ahead of time. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm setting up curves, but Jay is taking on, you know, that space and roasting more and learning more about it. And, Sick. you know, I, I, I don't know. We're, <laughs> we're a small company. So it is like two of us. Yeah. No, so that's for tight. Me, it's, you know, Jay's, Jay's jumped in full and he's taken on learning everything about this business, which is, invaluable as far as like having somebody to work with um so yeah i guess i'm the head roaster but you know jay's jumped in and just in and learning a lot so i I love that i like to think that dylan owns compa coffee roasters and as a good business owner he is on the floor every day he's doing his research he's looking for the next 10 steps we need to take and how we're going to take them because of the endless legalities and permitting that we have to deal with and Dylan takes on a lot of that himself. Anytime a door opens behind him, he says, I have 10 tasks. You want to take these two? I grab hold of those two the best I can. Tight. You know, and we, and we keep going forward. And whether it be a Hawthorne needs this person to be on bar every day, boom, I'm going to take that. A compa needs, I need somebody roasting next to me, boom, I'm going to take that. He says, yo, hot sauce is coming up. Boom, let's get into hot sauce. Let's do this. Hot so- Wait. What? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that was a weird way to drop that. My bad. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you just bad. like graze over. Like, is that the name of a coffee or like you're actually going to do hot sauce? No, no. So, yeah, I mean, cat's out of the bag as of like three sorry. days ago. But yeah, we, uh, no, it's good. It's a super smooth, Jay. Super smooth transition. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do, baby. No, we, I love um, it. I love it. We've been working with a, a local hot sauce company for a couple of years. They've been doing farmer's markets. Um, they're really great people. And, you know, they just, they're not interested in, in continuing it, but the product is solid. And in the same thread that we've been researching coffee for about a year, or we were researching coffee, roasting coffee for six months before we got into it. We've been researching hot sauce for six months now, and we've been making it and we were running different test batches of it and yeah. we ended up announcing that we bought this hot sauce company last like three days ago. Mm-hmm. So it's baby Clydesdale. Check it out. Uh, Dude, that's what that thing was. Or, I was like, what is the baby yeah, Clydesdale man. that you sent me? I was like, what is this? It's hot sauce, bro. <laughs> I did not know. <laughs> it's a hot sauce company that, um, it's awesome because we've been serving it on our toast for so long. And I think it's got that cross promotion this entire time where we're like, Hey, this is our pesto. And people are like, what is this crazy vegan pesto that y'all got going on? Okay. And now we, we went and bought the company and now we can delve into the, again, world of hot sauce. As he said, like we spent six months, imagine coffee. You spent six months learning how to roast coffee. Yeah. Bro, hot sauce is that in depth, if not more so. 
where like people are there's farms of peppers and you combine these different peppers and make these different sauces let alone what the word sauce and like the five mother sauces and then the whole rabbit hole you can go down on sauce that we're just delving our little head just getting the tip just yeah, like the man. tip of the iceberg bro the rabbit hole is I guess, deep. I, yeah i mean i guess for me like to get outside of uh you know our coffee vein on this on this you know, chat, but yeah, I think that we're about just, we're about providing an experience and be it hot sauce or coffee or tacos or smoothies. If that was our chosen path, we're about, we want to connect with people and we want to have that, you know, that moment where we make people's days better. Um, we want to leave people. I have a personal ethos, a personal message for myself, which is just, you know, positively affect the people around you so they can positively affect the people around them. And I just, if I can, if I can reach out and just like give my buddy a pat on the back and it makes his day better then who knows what he's going to do that day. So if we can do that for people every day, we can do it in hot sauce. We just want to find things we're passionate about that can, we can inject that into moving forward. And that's, that's the crux of what, why we, why I do what I do. And, you know, I, I definitely know Jay's jumped onto that and feels that For and sure. you know, we're, 100%. we're rolling with it. Yeah, man. I sleep better at night. If I made somebody's day better that day. I like that. I, I mean, that's, it's not hard, bro. No, it's not hard at all. I mean, uh, <laughs> have you seen that meme? And it's like, I don't know if it's the same guy or like maybe just multiple people have the hoodie, but it was like, Hey, you person behind me, you have a great day. And that's what it says on the back of yeah. his hoodie. <laughs> it's like, just those little things, those man. little things, man. I mean, it's really easy. Like I personally think it's easy to do in coffee and I understand like not a lot of people are social and some people are, so it's easier for people to fit in that way. But again, just like Dylan said, man, like there's a million ways to make somebody's day better, whether it be hot sauce or coffee or serving food at a cafe, like however it is you find yourself doing it the easiest, like getting where you fit in. And like, if I can make somebody's day better by serving fucking coffee, then I'm going to serve coffee. Yeah. It's just that easy. And hot sauce makes a lot of people's days better. (laughs) I agree. Just like for us. Yeah. I mean, on top of that, it's. How many stories have you heard about, I don't know, I mean, I I heard someone talk about this the other day, and this is, you know, kind of random, but it's just somebody said, like, it was a famous person, and they were doing an interview, and they said, hey, this guy came up to me and said, because you said hi to me in the hall, it made my day, it turned me around, it whatever, you know, the little things we do every day, you have no idea how that's going to affect somebody else. And it's all the little interactions and all the little things that we we just do throughout our day. And you could negatively affect somebody or you could positively affect somebody. And you might as well positively affect somebody. You might as well take that opportunity just to like, you have no idea. That little thing you did, that you said hi, you waved to someone, you served him a dope ass fucking coffee and a great toast with whatever. You know, it doesn't matter what it is, but you put your heart into it and you showed somebody that, you know, the world is good today and they went on and had a fucking better day. That's all. That's all it is. That's all we're trying to do. I mean, honestly, I'm going to, I, I'm in complete agreement with that because at the end of the day, those, what, you know, what, what's that, what, what's that saying? It says, um, everybody's fighting battles that you have, that you have yeah. no knowledge about every single day. And just yeah. by able to be just a little bit positive to that person, you might affect that person. Like the perfect example, uh, I had some guests on uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago now, and it was uh, my homies, this band called Through the Roots, or a reggae band. And one thing I wanted to ask I them, so. yeah, 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 it, cool, fuck yeah. <laughs> um, and he, they're Sorry. super awesome guys. And uh, Evan and uh, Brady, they were telling me that people will message them on Instagram or whatever or tell them in person about how their music affected them and made them not want to commit suicide or made them like get through whatever thing they had. And it's like, I, I know Brady. I've like, and this is not to throw Brady down, but like, bro, I've gotten so shit faced with Brady. And it's like, I love him. I love Brady. Like I have these videos of me and him just getting like turned up at a Christmas party. 
and to know that your like my my guy who I would just like turn up and make these weird like drunk videos with, he would he's affecting people in such a positive way that they don't want to kill themselves. Like, yo. But that's that's, that's the amazing. point though. It's like the little things. I mean, just because you get fucked up doesn't mean you can't be a good guy, right? Bro, I, mean, I bet <laughs> those videos might have saved him a couple of times. Oh, dude. But, no, by but, all means, that does not make that, you a bad guy. <laughs> like those videos you're speaking of, of that, it might mean, help like, it's 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 just like it doesn't you don't know what you're doing most of us don't know what we're doing to positively affect people oh no it's just you you might as well you might as well make that intentional choice to like hey we're gonna serve coffee we're gonna do it the best that we possibly can we're gonna make everyone's experience the best it possibly can be and you just set people off that way and it you know hopefully Hopefully we, we, you know, leave people better than they came in. That's, you know, so the short goal. So my next question then is like, you guys are a cafe, you serve food. I honestly, the other day I was telling Tyler about this. I went to tired eyes this morning yeah, to get a coffee and I went up to Tyler. The first thing I said to Tyler was like, bro, I didn't know you were closed on Mondays. And then so I drove. I went on Monday too. Dude, I went there. My <laughs> dumbass could have looked it up, Tyler. It's not your fault, bro. It's not your fault, Tyler. I could have looked no, it no, up. But no, no, no. Wait, wait. It, it gets better. So I drove from there to Public Square in La Mesa. They were closed. Oh, they're closed Monday. No yeah. way. Dude, <laughs> dude, I shit you not. And then I went to Hawthorne and I was like, I swear to God, if Hawthorne's closed, I'm over it. Hey, we're open Mondays dude, just to I, open yeah. lane doors. <laughs> dude, <laughs> Mondays sh- are a good day for us. Come by Mondays, everybody. And I thought Mondays that I thought Black Market was closed. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to one-stop shop it at Hawthorne. I, hey, got, a, I got the brown bag. Any day, people, seven days a week, <laughs> yo, seven to two. Y'all yo. can one-stop shop Hawthorne Coffee, 319 yo. Adams Avenue, baby. Come on by. Mad plug. Mad plug. <laughs> we got pastries. We got toast. We got paninis. We got coffee. Dude, the brown bag is fire. The brown bag is, <laughs> that's what I'm by, saying. Yo. I got the brown bag, and I got my drink, and then I went home, and then I drive by. I see Black Market's open. I was like... What the fuck? Like, it's like, just meant to be, bro. You're meant to one stop shop at Hawthorne. As is every listener of this program, you, you know, guys are meant to one stop shop. You have that, that brown, you have that brown bag. That means you had our uh, baby Clydesdale spicy romesco. So, Did you know. I unknowingly yeah, you tried the sauce? Up. You've tried it. <laughs> I got lost in the sauce. Hey, bro. That happens, that happens to the best of us. You know what I mean? I'm getting lost in sauce for a couple months now, dude. If you get lost in the sauce, you know you might not be the boss, hey, but man. you know, but maybe the sauce <laughs> is the boss. Some of us are the sauce bosses. <laughs> that's how it is. Yo, yo, okay, okay. So that's another thing that you guys do separate from the pack in terms of specialty coffee. Mo- I don't. I mean, there's C- Cafe Calabria. They make like pizza, right? Uh-huh. They make other things, but you guys, you guys have like a very extensive cafe. But you also now roast your own coffee, and now you're into hot sauce. Yo, so like, I mean, the cliche question is like, what's next? I mean, honestly, I think that Hawthorne has taken on from the jump, like, all of our syrups are house-made, our chia pudding's house-made, and then we started doing sauces in-house. I mean, we were always making our granola in-house. Like, in-house is such a kitschy term. But, like, what it means is we take pride in studying about the product and making it ourselves. We can outsource any and every ingredient, but to do it ourselves shows pride in what we do and why we do it. It shows responsibility that I can go out and like, I fucking know what chia pudding is, but we still went out and studied it, but we still went out and learned it and we still tasted things and created a recipe and went from there. Our chai is house made. So naturally our coffee is house made. Then our hot sauce is house made. And who knows, are we going to start baking bread? Are we going to start making pastries? We're all of these conversations have come up. And if the door opens, we walk through it. I like that. But you guys still do it out of your main location. I mean, the next, uh, the I mean, next dog, natural dog, step. Dog, you want to give us like, a location, we'll do it out of there too. Dude, bud, I'm but. just saying, it's like the next natural step would to be like evolving into a bigger space. Especially with all the new things <laughs> yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. No, we've, we've uh, you know, just everything out there. We've been like looking for something for a long time. Mm-hmm. And there's been different, I don't know, I I don't want to say, like, iterations of this, but there's just been different, like, versions of what we've been looking for. And 
thankfully, I, I'll say that none of them worked out up to this point. Mm-hmm, absolutely. I've been really, my, thankfully I have people like Jay and Nat and people like you're talking about everyone at the shop that has taken this on. Cause I've been spending the last couple of years looking for expansion and trying to do things. And just like we do with everything else, we're trying to be intentional about this and we've, looked at spaces and I've spent months and months negotiating things and making sure it's right for us and things have fallen through. And it's, you know, it's a kick in the stomach half the time where I'm just like down as hell and damn, this didn't work out. And, but obviously it's all, we wouldn't have a hot sauce company if any of those Mm -hmm. other things worked out right now. And I think this is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I'm super about this hot sauce company right now between the roasting and all these other things that we're doing. And we're currently looking at a place and hopefully it works out and we'll see, like, I'm not going to get, we're not going to get wrapped up in being attached to a path because hell it's 2020, right? You know, you never know. So all the things I would have done up to this point, we would have been super fucked by, for sure. By if I took any of the other places that we would have like sure. been after the last couple of years. But yeah, I think, you know, we are we are talking to somebody about a space right now. So just to get into like what you're talking about. But um we'll see. Like we want to be flexible. We want to do what feels great and what's what makes sense for us. No, that's awesome. I mean I respect that completely. I mean, especially now you're going into your sixth year as a business. You have a success, uh, very successful cafe. You have a roasting business now that's separate. And then now you're also going to be doing a hot sauce company. Like, damn, son. I mean, about honestly, revenue. bro, like, I think you can move into any house, but that don't make it a home. And Hawthorne is home to us. And if we're going to open a second business, it can't be lacking. Can't be anything less than uh-huh. Hawthorne is. You definitely can't be cost slipping. That's what I'm saying. So the next one has to be home times two times five times 10 it has to be us and a lot of people like work their ass off to walk to get an opportunity to walk through certain doors and we just do us we keep grinding we stay motivated we just keep doing our thing and then if doors open you fucking you thank your stars and you walk through it bro like people want to see you do well people around us want to see us do well we notice this and as long as we keep doing us and keep trying to make everybody's day better, opportunities will keep coming our way. It's popping. Just keep your head in the trenches, keep working, keep going, keep a smile on your face, and make sure the people next to you are doing good too, and good things will come. I love that. Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, to add on to him, what he, it's just that uh, get your, like, mission in, you have a clear mission and your clear values for your business, and don't sway from that kind of stuff. Even if an opportunity comes, it seems like it should work. It seems like it should be the thing we've, if we've done anything well, I think it's, we've done that well with we're, we're we know who, what we want to do. We know who we want to be, and we're not going to like throw that away for something that may be shiny and flashy and like make us look good but it doesn't fit with what we're trying to accomplish. And I think that's, you know, that's why we haven't expanded at this point. And don't get me wrong. Like I was cooking hot sauce on like a couple stools yesterday on a hot plate by the back door. (laughs) And like, you know, yeah, I'd like to have a fucking kitchen right now. And we're trying to make that happen, but we're trying to also just keep our vision set and like, make our decisions very intentionally. Hey, I'm mad respect, Dylan. I respect the fact that you're just talking, you know, I wanted to like, I kind of made a mental note about this, but like you were saying how, you know, you would be down and out about things and definitely like, you know, starting my own business. And I, I'm in a 2020 coffee roasting business. I'm an e-commerce only as you guys know, but I hustle fucking hard with that shit and I try to put it out. But dude, some days I'll just be down. And like, I wanted to ask you about that is that as a, as a, as a business owner, how do you, I mean, obviously you just keep grinding, but you were like, you said something very important. Like you'd be down and out. I feel like a lot of people only talk about success. Like, let's talk about like those days when like, dude, it fucking kind of sucks. Like uh, just a little bit, just a little bit. I mean, I'll just say that. I mean, but at the same time, I also I mean, wanted to I'm gonna double down on that and say it <laughs> sucks more than it doesn't. But oh wow! 
the successes, but the successes are so worth it. It's so high. Like it's so you Mm -hmm. like you can get kicked 30 times, but you get up that one, that 31st time and you do it. And it's what you exactly what you wanted. That's that fuels you for the next 300 times. That's what's popping. I love that. That's that's what it's really about for, I mean, Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't, failure is not even like a word. Like I know that's like a cliche or whatever, a trope, but it's, that's just, failure is when you stop, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you quit. Not when you quit, when you stop doing it, like we've been knocked down a million times. I mean, Hawthorne, we're here where we are now. We're getting our ass kicked in 2020. We're doing it. We're doing well, as well as we can be doing, I should say. But, you know, I I spent three years working bar every day. Mm -hmm. Jay was there. You know, Jay knows. Jay, how long have you been at Hawthorne? Over four years. And a half? Four years. Yeah, three years. Four. Four Four years. Three and a half years, like... Four. Four years. Like, <laughs> Four years. Who's Sorry, counting? It's fine. It's fine. No, 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 no. It's fine. How long? Three, thirty days. Who cares? Sorry. <laughs> four, uh, four years. Zoom. Four I'm just a little bit. So four years. Like Jay's been there the the majority of this, and like up until probably a year after Jay started, you know, I was bare, I wasn't making any money. Mm-mm. I wasn't doing well. I'm not doing well now, but we're just. <laughs> You know, we're making it. We're we're doing what we want, and we're doing, you know, we're 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 crushing it as far as I on my scale. So I love where we're at, and I love what we're doing. And you know, just because the first year, two years doesn't go well, if you can scrap by and you can keep rolling, that's all that matters. Like, you know, failure is just quitting, like you said. I, I think some people like to work for companies where they look at their boss and he's some. 10 million dollar making dude and he's in some mansion with 30 cars and he's driving all this and i think i benefit from rubbing shoulders with the man that owns the company i think i benefit from like seeing how much is on my plate and then knowing that like everybody next to me is eating the same amount i am and the more i grind the more he eats and like the more like i'm not naive to the idea that if i work my ass off for the next five years dylan's kids will benefit like it's a motivation it just is like hawthorne and baby clydesdale and Compa total is under 10 employees, all three companies combined. So with each of us being such a big puzzle piece in a small puzzle, we know the harder we grind and the more we chew every day, the more we're going to get done, the faster we're going to advance. And the more that will be on my plate, that will be on Dylan's plate, that will be on Natalie's plate. And it's motivating, man. Like to see those million dollar companies and to see the dude with however many Lamborghinis or whatever, like, a bro, that's tight. Like I wish I had a Lambo too, but like, not if it means my boss ain't eating, not if it means my other people ain't eating. And like, I watched Dylan eat less so that I could eat more for years that he didn't like, not that he like waved in my face or anything like that, but like, bro, we're a small business. You know what I mean? Like I see it in front of my face and it's motivating. And I, I think that other people need to like think about that sometimes too especially now with small business and there's all that rhetoric online i know all of you are seeing it and hearing it and reading it about support your small business so we can eat at night but like it's real man caffeine and green knows dude caffeine and green yeah like i was i was talking about this before the podcast like i swear to god bro if i didn't have steel mill i wouldn't be able to do caffeine and green just by itself i mean i do a lot of stuff for caffeine and green by myself to generate what I'm doing. The fact that I can even do that to gross, like, dude, the first time I made a thousand dollars off the shit I did. I mean, it granted, it didn't pay off half the debt that I accumulated while I was trying to do it. But the first time I made a thousand dollars off of caffeine and green off of what it happened. And that's not to throw out a number. Cause that number is not big, but I was so fucking hype, bro. I was like, son, like I was like, I had like a little mental pep talk. I was like, are you serious right now? Son? You just made a, Okay, your first thousand dollars. Your homies are down. <laughs> Tell like, me that this. shit is so gangster. Like because <laughs> because you sell the steel mill now, and steel mill is your boys. No, I I'm the head roaster for steel mill. Right. So okay. I'm actually an employee here as well. So let's say the owners here, Shay. Yeah, Shay, uh, Lil C, Riley. What say? Okay, let's say those three dudes. Those three dudes come in tomorrow, and they're like, "We want to work our ass off." And you, not that you're working any harder, but you see them work a shit ton harder. 
mm-hmm. of a sudden they're moving more coffee. So you start making more money. And all of a sudden you're, oh. you're having to roast more coffee. You're having to do more because your homies are grinding. Your homies are eating more because they're making more themselves. You're eating more because you're making more from their success too. A hundred percent. And that's how I think we need to set ourselves up is like, if I work harder, I need to make it so that I'm not the only one benefiting from this. If I work harder, if I wake up early and post on all our social medias and dial in our coffees and get my coffee log and talk with my baristas, I know that Hawthorne and Compa and Clydesdale are going to be better all week for it. I'm going to eat more. Dylan's going to eat more. Natalie's going to eat more. It's just one of those things that like take more than you're already chewing. And then before you know it, chewing just fucking easier. Bro, no. You know what? It's a better way to put it. It's like when people are like, yo, I got too much shit on my plate. You'd be like, yo, just get a bigger plate. That's it. You know Everything people. you just said, just get a bigger plate. Like, I don't want to hear no fucking whining. I don't want to hear nothing. Like, yo, we're going to get this, and we're going to grind, and we're going to, like, yo, we're going to come up together. A rise, What is it? A rising tide raises all ships? That's it. Like, honest to God, bro, like, I... That's why I love working for here. And on your point, like what, exactly what you're saying, you know, Riley, little C and Shay, uh, Shay and little C, Shay was there the first day I worked at zoom bar, like, or the first day I was there to roast and working with him. I worked side by side with him for like three years. Now I'm working here. I still know with him and bro, I, I definitely fit here in the sense where like it's skateboarding. It's like just homies. It's coffee knowledge. It's, it's amazingness, but I love Shay. I love Shay. He's an amazing human being and he's so knowledgeable about everything he does. And you know what the best part is? He doesn't look the part. So it's like, I want to see him succeed. And when like, I am able to be that, that, that piece of the puzzle to help Riley, help Shay, help little C get to this point where they're succeeding, bro. It's exactly what you're saying. Like, I want to see my people eating. They're my people. Like, yeah, I have my own thing and they dude, a hundred percent. Anybody else could be like, nah, we're not going to let you do your own brand because it's competing with our brand. It's like, son, nah. Shay's like, we love that you're doing what you're doing. Keep fucking doing what you're doing. Just do steel mill too. And I'm like, bro, I'm a hundred percent down for steel mill. Like I'm, I'm here, bro. This is where I want to stay. Like if I'm going to work for anybody else, I'm going to work for my boys. I'm going to, I'm going to remove one aspect of this just for fantasy purposes. Here's where being a good friend and removing yourself from the equation enters. Let's say Steel Mill comes to you one day and they say, hey, we want to move in a different direction with our coffee program. We're going to go with this roaster. Yeah. You're going to be A, brokenhearted. B, you're probably going to be pretty sad. But C, you're going to stay motivated for your homies. And you're going to say, you know what, bro? Like, you feel what you feel. You're an adult. You get to make your own decisions. I still want to see you grind and still see you achieve Always. and still all of that. Yeah. It, I, like, in, this, in the same respect to Hawthorne, I am so grateful, endlessly thankful for the over four years of opportunities that have been given to me. Every day, those opportunities could be taken from me for any number of reasons. Uh, and I think legally they can't be taken from me for an even longer list of reasons, but that's besides the <laughs> point. Um, every day. I mean, yeah, you've got so, there's so many reasons. There's Come so on. many reasons, but I, I have been getting a laundry list of reasons for this man to fire me any day he wants to. <laughs> um, <laughs> And if he wanted to, that's his prerogative. But I'm still, now that I've been there for four years, now that Dylan is a paternal figure as well as his dad, like it's, I just want to see everybody succeed, whether I can help or not. Luckily enough, I still can help. So God damn it, I'm going to fucking help. Yeah. Look, for, for, for me, I'm, you know, I, I, I came into this from, I don't know, you know, from the bottom. I don't know, let's call it that. You know, I, like I said, I started in the business working in, in the dish pit and working in kitchens and being a door guy at a bar in PV and did that for years and years. And I always, my mindset doing everything I did was let's do the job of the guy. That's one, one notch, one notch above the run from you, even if I'm not getting paid for that job. Cause I want to learn from, learn something new, do something co- cool just help somebody out even like, Hey, that guy above me may have too much on his plate. So let me help him out. Let me learn while I'm helping that person out. It's a, you're being a journeyman at that point. So when I was a door guy, I was helping the runner. When I was a runner, I was helping the bar back. When I was a bar back, I was helping the, the, the bartender. When I was a bartender, I was helping the manager. It's like everything I could think of. And then obviously you set yourself up for opportunities when you're doing that. And I wanted to set up my business in that way where, we're, I, I'm not, I'm nowhere without 
the people that work for me. Without Jay, without Natalie, without Will, without you know anybody that works for me, I'm nowhere without them. I, I can't do this myself. I'm not an idiot. You know, I know those things. So why wouldn't I treat those people with the same respect that I would expect myself? Like you know, these people, they're they're doing it all right now. They're they're the they're the lifeblood of Hawthorne. They've all been um, there for a very long time and just crushing it for for doing what we do and my job isn't necessarily making coffee anymore or even interacting with people as much as I want it to be I want to be talking to people but my job is taking care of Jay and taking care of the people that work for me so that they can crush it for Hawthorne and crush it crush it for you guys that all come in so that's that's my mindset going into this and I always want everyone to like, you know, the pie gets bigger and we're not going to like keep the one little piece for everyone that set you up for that. That's ridiculous. You know, as you all said, we're all going to eat more. And it's kind of the mindset we had going into this. And like I said, we hungry. Dude, hell yeah. We I mean, hungry. We hungry. I mean, you got to stay motivated, but at the same time, it's like, <clears throat> and this is, I think might be a really interesting, I would love to hear your guys' perspective on this especially because you have a cafe and you have a team of employees now that even in the lockdown, you're still able to support. So that being said, how do you feel that coffee, the coffee business has affected you with COVID? I mean, now we're in a second lockdown. You guys have this cafe, you have three businesses. How has it affected you? Like how, how are you guys pivoting? How are you guys really staying above water but because you guys are essential deemed essential workers i am able to still sure. roast coffee as an essential person Man. that's what i'm saying like yo what is this that's some 2020 Bro, shit uh, i think we can all we say are it. essential we, we are, are essential, essential to the lifeline of the country son <laughs> all right dylan i'll let you take that one first, you go ahead. all right um god how are we have we we you know, people ask, we would talk about this, like, how's your week going? How's your month going? How's your year going? Whatever. It's just, you wake up the next morning, you just figure out what you're going to do that day because it changes every day. Um, we're very committed to the safety of our employees, the safety of our, of our customers. We've been so since day one and you know, we've made adjustments to our service model and we're not going to steer clear of that. And yeah, it's hurt our sales, obviously. I mean, I'm not going to say it hasn't. It, it would be great to be firing and have a full cafe with people chilling in there every day on, you know, oh, on a Saturday, I have 25 people in my cafe that probably only seats 10. Bro, but, you're working that shift. I'm not, I'm not being in the cafe for that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> We would love to have that happen again, and we would love to be back where we were a year ago. But we understand what's going on right now, and we're just we're we're adjusting, and it hurts. But at the same time, like COVID kicked me in the ass to make us get our Compo website going, mm -hmm. and to make that something that we prioritized for a little while. And we were dragging feet trying to make the website happen and it was, we were building it and blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, we've been roasting our coffee for a little while. We were selling it in the cafe. It was something that we were building at the time, but, you know, perfection, you know, we were being perfectionists and trying to like make it perfect before we fully launched the website. And then COVID happens and we're like, oh fuck, we just got to go. We gotta start selling some coffee so that I can eat. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> so we launched the website. Wow. We made the website happen, right at that point. Quick, so, yeah. you know, there's there's good things and bad, obviously, that comes with every situation. But we're in a hard time. I just hope that we can we just we can keep with our path and we can keep pushing ahead and stay focused continue to provide the best experience that we can provide. And we've done that. We've made adjustments every month. We make an adjustment. We're going to do this different. We're going to set up a little 
we're going to build a stand out in front of the shop now so that we have, you know, we're not going to pretend like this is going away in a day. I definitely would say I want, I mean, like, thank you, Dylan. I appreciate that. That's, I mean, I completely agree about the not going away in a day, but like now I'd like to hear Jay, like how does this affect you? Because you are customer facing. Yeah, you do see people every day. Say, for sure. Um, I will say that as far as my roles and responsibilities go, as far as me being on bar, that time did not hardly, I mean, except for like our cafe times being altered, my time on bar did not get altered at all pandemic wise. I was on bar just as much. So I got to see the mental state of the customer base go through the COVID waves. And like for me, I, I'm still working. Like my social bar didn't change at all. But for all these people that had to now they're at home and now their only social interaction is the five minutes they're interacting with me at Hawthorne. Initially, it was hard socially to enforce COVID standards because this is the only social interaction these people are having. So they're very affectionate and they want to be around you and all this. But me at the time, I was like, hell no. Like y'all, yeah, nah. mm, 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 mm. <laughs> y'all can 12 feet for me. Miss me, like, miss me with that. No, hug, <laughs> no, you can put that order in online, but toastcab.com, <laughs> Hawthorne coffee. No, um, you know, it, it was tough to see the population turn into that. I mean, obviously my job, before COVID, I was, I considered myself this like bartender of coffee and I was trying to get all this different glassware with these different garnishes and make these cocktails that were coffee based and no alcohol for people to enjoy and like kid cocktails and shit like that. Obviously COVID halted all of that and challenge accepted. I got to make it into go cups, bring it, you know, you, the waves change, but you still got to ride them. And that's what COVID has been. That's what COVID's shown me. And obviously people need fucking extra optimism at this point because it is dreadful out there. And you see the people that are just plugged into whatever news source all day and they're coming in dreadful. And at the beginning it was, not to repeat the word again, but it was like existential dread. People were coming in and they're like, the world's on fire. And I'm like, hey, dude, it's, it's not. Like, it's bad, but we're, we'll be okay. And you just have to keep telling people that. Like, as you set down coffee, it's like, we're going to be okay. Have a good day. We're going to be okay. Have a good day. Yeah. Like, and you just keep reinforcing that. Um, luckily enough, March, it was scary. We're in December now. I think people have kind of. Dude, we spent, it's coming up on a year anniversary for us. Yeah. Bro. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty gnarly. And like, just to get back on what you said, what you asked the, your former <laughs> question, it's just like, it's just, this is like, awful for running a business during COVID. We don't want to do this. Nobody's looking to, like, nobody wants this. Like, like we talked about earlier, we sat there building our bar with tape on the floor focused on the customer experience. I mean, our bar is very low as for barista standards, and I think everyone's done well at adapting to that, but you know, as far as like what baristas are used to, we, we put a low bar in there just because we didn't want there to be anything blocking the customer from standing 36 inches away from the barista talking to them because that was five years ago, six years ago, whatever. And that was like that experience. We wanted to have that personal experience. And now people can't even walk in our cafe. Like that's heart wrenching. It's fucking crazy. But dude, yeah. I mean, two years you know, ago, it was a vital part of the experience. I don't think he heard you. Oh, sorry. Uh, even as, as you said, like five years ago, we made that to be part of the experience. I think two years ago, as I was training people, as I was coming into the cafe, it was still a vital part of the experience. I loved looking people like in their eyes and talking to them as if they were right next to me. There wasn't Absolutely. That, people yeah. would, you know, and then, you know, you get the person that's just never seen a coffee shop like that before that does what they do before and they are into it. And then you get the home coffee nerd that wants to talk about your dose in and out. And we have that opportunity to like, you're standing there and you're within literally three feet of someone and there's nothing blocking your eye line. That's what we wanted. We wanted to have the low bar, low espresso machine, low everything to keep that interaction. Like we're here for, we're here for the people. We want to talk to people. And that was like, shit, that was why when I was on bar, that was what got me going. Like every day you yep. talk to someone, you get to like 
have that cool interaction. That was awesome. So yeah, that's the hardest part for me right now. I mean, obviously revenue dips, we're going to deal with that. We're going to make adjustments. We're going to properly run our business so that we can weather the storm. But that's the part that like kicks you in the ass. Well, dude, I mean, I just to contribute on like my thought on that is the one thing I noticed about your bar, I never thought it was super low for a bar. I just thought other bars were higher, but at the same time, uh, when, and we've talked about this at nauseum every time you're on the fucking podcast, I swear, Jay, we talk about the, the AeroPress competition. Yep. Did the yeah. bar being as low as it is made so, it made it so perfect for the competitions that Absolutely. you had there for yeah, pour man. overs for AeroPress. Even when the judges were sitting there, the judges weren't like, like, mid chest head up trying to taste it with a chair they're like in a comfortable stool being able to cup like pretty adequately yeah with like, at home yeah it's they feel like, like they're mellow. at home that's what i'm saying like Hawthorne i is love our home. that i love that like i think it also is like perfect for my like arm to be almost fully straight when i tamp so like oh. it's like the perfect height for me to like not have to like have a big bend in my arm or or about my wrist collapsing when I'm jamming. It's yeah, you wait, you're super choice. tall. Yeah, you're bro. six inches taller <laughs> yeah. than our entire staff, bro. Like what? If you're gonna build a bar, you might as well build it for yourself, right? Come on. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Make sure. Oh my gosh. Dude, yeah, but that's. I don't know. That's just my interpretation or my contribution to that. Cause I definitely thought it was very interesting about, it was perfect. It was perfect for competition. And then it makes me, now that I'm thinking about this, I'm glad we're bringing it up because that makes me sad because that competition specifically, that arrow press competition, dude, there was so many people in that shop. Everybody was like crowded together. Siri Simran had Pablo walking around. Bro, like, all those competitions like, at all those coffee shops were that way. And again, to like reinforce, I don't think enough people are saying like, we're going to get back there. Like a year from now, maybe not two years from now. I'm you thinking know, like five. Be, for sure. We're going to get back there. <laughs> Eventually we'll get back. We'll get back and we'll be having parties and she will be safe again. And just look forward to that. And like, I have so many thoughts of brewing on whether it be garnish drinks or competitions or road trips I want to go on or like all these things, like keep looking to the future and keep grinding. Like the future exists because it does. Oh dude, road trips are, st- well, are going to be even well, more so look, now. Like 100 road trip wasn't the best example for that, but you know. <laughs> look for the opportunity because the opportunity is there. Mm-hmm. Like the, for us moving from in it's definitely not as much of like a a giant jerk like like covid was but the three or four years leading up to covid that we had at hawthorne there was things changing there's always things changing Mm -hmm. there's always an opportunity make sure that we have our eyes set on that as much as this sucks we still have to look at it as an opportunity to be like how can we adapt our business to move forward in and serve people best this way or how can we adapt i love those comps man i love doing stuff at the shop we had music there we had like I, we were talking about with former roasters when cat and cloud was there yep we put like 75 people in that shop and i my you know we'll have to blast it out there but we'll say that my uh fire code is probably about 15 or 20 yeah, I was about to say. so yeah no definitely <laughs> now, i've been in no, there when it's super we, crowded <laughs> we packed the house and we had some cool events in there like i know that sucks that we can't do that anymore but like let's keep let's keep looking for opportunities to like serve people and do it in cool ass ways we can do it on the sidewalk we can do it with whatever else we can think of. You guys had like a Sprocast mixer there. Oh, bro, we had a couple of those. Yeah, man. The Sprocast Ooh. mixers were... That was supposed to be like a run of events, too. We we're supposed to do I a remember. bunch of those. Yeah. I remember. Mm-hmm. Dude, there was even talk when me, you, and Siri got together last year. Oh, fuck, I remember that talk, About too. like the competition that we wanted to put together. Right, a little cocktail the podcast, comp. yeah. Damn, that would have been sick. Bro, don't. I mean, it'll be sick when we do it, but like, 
I still I haven't forgot about that. I still think about that mm-hmm. shit. Write it down, bro. I, dude, I don't need to write yeah, it down. It's all in there, G. I it's it's <laughs> I didn't forget. Every time I see you, I think about it. I'm also, like, there's gonna be more AeroPress comps. Like all these things we're still keeping in mind for the future, including Sprocast. Like I think right now it's it's important to take that time and make sure that we all take our steps to make sure that when we come back together, we can all still come. Do you know what I'm saying? Like after I know, yeah. Pause. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know when you know when you're you, like I'm gonna still said. come. No, like, nah, no, no, I'm so good. No, no, like, no, 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 no. Okay, when we all come back together, we need to make sure everybody. You're talking can, about Sprocast. I'm just talking about people in general, bro. Like, there's that saying like everybody needs to be separate now so that when we can come back together, everybody will be there. Do you know what I mean? Like with COVID, motherfuckers are dying because they're not being separated. But if everybody took their space, then everybody could show back up. Same with the businesses. Like if this lockdown wasn't prolonged, maybe not as many businesses would have closed down. Therefore, more businesses would be able to open when the world opens back up. I mean, that's all in theory. Yeah. But But see, see, somebody asked me this yesterday and I honestly don't know because I didn't look it up because I've been just hustling. But like, is are there other states right now going into lockdown or is it just Cali? I don't know about states, but I know countries. Countries are open on the other side of the world. Dude, Taiwan, they've gone like over 200 days without no coronavirus. They had like a fucking full on festival. I'm telling you. A oh, festival. Yeah, New Zealand's popping right now. I'm not about this. Like, why are we not? Don't, why are we America. not there, son? Bro, you're talking about the most entitled country in the world. I'm pissed. Our president was calling masks pussy. We don't even need to like, talk about the country, son. We're in Cali right now. We're in Southern okay, California. You're right, you're right. And like we're our own Gavin country. Newsom is shutting us down. California, like it's like that scene in New Girl. Shut it down. Like when Jess is just, shut it down. That's all she's doing right now, son. That's all he's doing. It's just, Cali, nah, son. We close for business. Come back later. Three weeks. <laughs> I'll see y'all after Christmas. Dude. Um, all I know is like I'm not a politician, and this is a very ignorant way to see it, but I'm sure Governor Newsom, as well as the millions of doctors in California, know like I don't know everything. You said Governor Newsom. G- Governor Newsom. Oh, you said Governor Newsom. Okay. I probably I don't know what that is. <laughs> anyway. Uh they know a lot of stuff I don't, and I'm glad I'm not a politician to be making that call, you know? Hundred percent. All I know is like the calls that are made, I got to work within what I can. Exactly. And I got to do the best with the cards that I'm given. Still need to hustle. On, on the poker table, you can't be worried about the cards next to you or the cards that are in the hand of the house. You got to worry about the own cards you damn self got and how you're going to play them to the best of your ability. Well, that's every that's everyday life too, and, though. Well, I'll just, just to tap onto that as a business owner, like we, I, you know, we see a lot of people doing crazy things right now or going all over the place. No one knows what to do as a business owner. We all want to do the right thing. I think, I think some people are tired of seeing, um, I don't know. I'll call it inconsistency, I guess, for lack of a better word between the direction of what people's plans are. And, we want to see someone take take control and like lead this and have a real plan, because the real plan isn't just shutting people down and just hoping shit works out. We we're happy to shut down and do to go business and do these things, but people need to, you know, the the government needs to step up and have some sort of plan for us, because as small businesses we can't just we can't just close our doors and be like well. Hopefully it all works out for everybody. You know, that's not how it works. Yeah, good luck, guys. <laughs> uh, good luck, guys. It's obviously not how it works. And I think that, I hope that they know that. But I don't I don't think anyone stepped up yet and made any real plans on that. We want to, at least, I, I can't speak for everyone, obviously. But I want to do the right thing. I want to keep people safe. I want to make sure that everyone like Jay said, comes back to the table next year. But we need some support from our our people out there so that we can all come back. Yeah, I definitely would have to agree with that. I mean, but at the same time, it's also, it puts, the, it, in a really weird way, this whole thing has like forced you to hang out with like the same people. Like, and especially if you're working and you, you know, you're doing these things, 
the the people that you're working with become your family. Like you're yo, we're going through a crazy time right now. So the people that you're hanging out with right now are probably going to be the people you're going to hang out with, for, hang out with for the rest of your life. Because I mean, maybe not of course, but we're going through such a crazy time where like you're creating bonds with people that are unprecedented almost because it's not, there's never yeah. been a time like this for people, for our generation, for sure, for, for our, for this time in history, if you will. Relationships are definitely stronger through trauma and through times of stress for sure. Yeah. And yeah. this is a pretty like traumatic and stressful time for the world. So whoever you're riding this wave with, just like you're saying, it would create a stronger bond for sure. And it's also important to like have those conversations with the people around you too in saying that and being like, Hey bro, like for, you know, on one side, thank you for showing up every day and being a positive light because three lights are shining on my life and you being a positive one, I'm so grateful for, or have that conversation of like 80% of my time is spent with you. So you being negative is making me negative. Can we alter that? And like having those serious talks with the people around you right now, because they have such a influence on how you feel every day at this point. It's important. I completely agree with that. I, on that note, I think uh, the people that I surround myself with on a daily are mainly, there's like, uh, I would say my immediate circle is like three to four people. It's pretty much four. But then, uh, even within that group of people, count on one hand, exactly. It's like me and then those four people. I will literally like just try to feed them positivity at nauseum almost <clears throat> just to make sure that whatever they're still striving for, trying to meet trying to uh, reach their goals that they can achieve it. And that whatever I can do to help them get there is going to help them, especially in this crazy ass time. Just so you know, it's a hey man, you're not alone. I, you know, I definitely think through COVID regardless of, how much you're hustling or whatever. I, I let my homies know now, like, Hey man, like I care about you. I love you. Like whatever you need, like just holler at me, sound like I'm here. Like always making it myself available, even though I'm mad, crazy busy. If you shoot me a text and it's from somebody that it's like, yo, I, they know I love them like on some real shit. I'll fucking respond. I don't give a fuck. I'll stop. I'll stop what I'm doing. Like, what do I need? What do I need to do? What do you, what do you need? Because going through the pandemic and doing these things, especially when I wasn't working before you had to deal with some, just like almost, I think I've talked about this before. It's like you deal with demons almost like you're, you're like sitting there and like somebody who's super active and doing these things. And now you're like, Oh my God, the lockdown, especially when people were super unsure. It was very, uh, it was a very reflective time. And it, my, at just at that first lockdown, my bond got deeper with the people that were in my immediate circle. And then fast forward to now, it's like the people that I've made it through this year with, and we're coming back around on the COVID anniversary for America, because it's already surpassed a year in, in, in Asia. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like, I honestly don't even know where I'd be without the people that are in my immediate circle. You know what they say? Those, they say, a person can tell a lot about you by the five people that you surround yourself with. And that's also a big, reflect, a big reflection on like how successful you might be. Or how negative or um, how much you might fall from, you know, from fall from grace, if you will. But I like to think on that positive side where it's like, yo, the five people that I surround myself with, you know, if, if anybody were to look at them and be like, yo, that's a bunch of hustlers right there. Those are about the people that are like, they know what they're about to do. They're driven. It doesn't matter the circumstance of the state of the world. We're going to rise to the rise to the top. The cream rises to the top every single time. When shit gets hard, people going to figure it out. You're going to adapt. You're going to overcome. And that's what like, I like to think about. Like when I have you guys on the show, it's like I see Dylan and I see you. And I, Jay, I've known you for a long time now. I met you at that competition. It's mm -hmm. been multiple years. Mm -hmm. And then I met you at the very beginning of my uh, coffee career. But then I see Dylan. He's talking, about, talking to me about owning three companies. And you're in the middle of a pandemic and you're just hustling. Like, yo, this is what I'm saying. This is why you're on the show. I respect that grind, that hustle. And like, yo, you guys are the cream of the crop to, for lack of a better term. You guys are rising to the top because when we do come out on the end of this, it's going to be, the, it's, it's it, what you said in, in the beginning of the conversation, taking this time to learn to new, do, to learn to, uh, to do new things. 
I was a perfect example of that myself and not to talk about myself, but like I can contribute to that. Meaning like I learned how to edit, I learned how to do these things and I learned how to like really hone a craft that's still developing. It hasn't even been a year yet. And I feel like because I'm just so obsessed with learning things because of what's, what the state of the world is, you're forced to do things and you guys are forced to do these things, but you're killing it and you're grinding. And I love that Dylan had said earlier in the conversation that he's sitting in the back, sitting on the stool. He's like, yeah, I'd love to have a kitchen, but I can't have that right now. But you're making the hot sauce in the back on some hot plates. I don't, I, I was really, really embarrassed to talk about this. And I think it's the first time I've actually talked about it on the podcast, but I'll share something with you guys. It's like when I started caffeine in green, I needed to get a cupping table because I you, because of COVID, we can't cup with like normal. So I have to sit there and like use ceramic cups and shit. But so I got rid of my bed. I had a queen size bed. I returned it to Ikea. I found out if you had it for less than a year, you get your credit back. So I have a credit now to Ikea. Ikea is the best. Dude, it's the, the best. best. It's the best. <laughs> and like <clears throat> I gave away my bed and I bought a $70 cot from REI and I bought a three inch memory phone and I put it on top of that. And that's what I sleep on every night. Cause I can break it down and I can like, I made my entire room an office and it's a cupping table like inner American where like, you know, you would sit there and you'd just try these coffees. I have my desk. I have all the product for caffeine and green. And then I have my coffee. Yo, I've, seen it. I've seen it on the, I've seen it on the Instagram. It looks legit. Dude, no, I, does, I never would have known. It does. Dude, no. Home and that's, office. it's a home office, yo. And I got my coffee there. Everything's like super great. It's all health, uh, you know, FDA compliant. Everything's chill. Sure. Yeah. But it's like, you're, I swear to God, bro. Don't hey, give me bro, that shit. Good, I swear good, to God, bro. Yo, you're good. It's got FDA. Green, baby. Yo, FDA. I'm Check mad. this man, I got, OSHA. I got the permit. OSHA, run this I man's got papers. The permit saying, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I love the fact that like you guys are willing to do whatever it, um, whatever it is that you have to do to get where you need to be because that's what I do, and that's why like yo, re- hey, like, yo, real recognize real Dylan. Yeah. There's no, yeah, there's no, sh- there's no shame in the grind. Like, this, where are we supposed to be? Like, what, are, what yardstick are you setting yourself off of when you say those things? Like, who gives a shit? Like, we're here, we're working, we're doing a thing. Like, you can change the world from your garage. You can change the world from your bedroom with your IKEA table. Like, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, we're here doing what we love. And I think that's the important thing. I think everybody's measurement of success is different. And I think in this business, it's easy to look at somebody with six turnkey cafes and say that's success. But for some of us, if I can share a burrito with my guy at the end of the day and we're sitting there and there's food in both of our bellies and my dog's got a smile in her face, fuck it, bro. I'm happy. You know what I mean? Well, dude, it's the little thing. If <laughs> Full circle. It's the little things, yo. It's the, yo. Little, things, it's the little things. There was, yeah. dude, there's a... Um, there is this, my homie Zeno, he lives in Portland, Oregon. If you ever hear this, Zeno, shout out to my boy. But we were in New York and I met him for the first time when I was in New York City. And we were with this dude named Taylor Naworki. And he was like, yo, I got go to I gotta go to work. He was a sober, straight edge guy who was a bartender. And he worked in New York City as a bartender. And I was like, how you? Good profit margin I, I, on I'm that like, employee. bro, how do you not drink and you're making these drinks? I don't know. He had a really good thing about mixology. Regardless. We were out skating one day and I, you know, I'm with these dudes I had just met. And so I like later Taylor. All right, cool. And Zeno's like, yo, G he's like, I'm from Portland. He's like, where are you from? I was like, yo, I'm from San Diego. And he was like, oh, well I, I I'm out here by myself. Do you want to just kick it? And I'm like, yeah, G let's kick it. So we end up skating around the city the whole day. And then we end up in Brooklyn on across the Williamsburg bridge. And he was like, yo, you want to go do a bridge report? And I was like a bridge report. What the fuck is that? And he was like, yo, on the middle of the Williamsburg Bridge, there's a crossover. Because it's basically, you go one way, you go the other way. It's just like north, south, south, north, whatever. But there is crossovers, but they're like, it's a long-ass bridge. So you have to cross over. Like, you just have to go down for a while. But the bridge reports is you get a tall can, and then you sit in that little crossover. You could, like, burn a joint. Because weed's mad. I don't know about weed now in New York, but at that time weed was mad illegal in new york like zero tolerance so you could like you're on the million you're on the middle of the williamsburg bridge ain't no cop out there you're smoking a joint you can have a tall can and just kick it and just chill and that to me is like the definition when i think the little things in life like yo that tall can was like 250 that weed 
it was bunk because it was New York. And, like it wasn't good at the time. And it cost you twenty dollars. But it cost me probably more yeah. because even cigs were like twenty bucks over there, man. Mm-hmm. Like shit was mad overpriced in New York City. But I was so happy at that moment. Like yo, and I think about just little things. I think about like life, and like, I always think about that moment when I was sitting there with Zeno, a dude I had literally just met. Maybe only kicked it with them that day, and we're piecing a joint, drinking tall cans, be like, yo, telling me about where he's from. I'm telling about where he's from. Like, I was like, yo, I'm from the Bay Area originally, but I live in San Diego, you whatever. But it's like that shit right there forever affected my life. And it's like when I'm stressing out, I think about that bridge report and like, yo, that moment exactly. And it's, so it's like when I'm putting effort into my coffee, I think about those moments and it's like, yo, those are like the things I want people to feel like that, like that nice I mean, you vibe. You feel me? Like <laughs> talk, talk about a callback, but I mean, like that's, you know, legit. That's what we're talking about. Like you, that, that moment as stupid as it was for your homie, maybe, or it was, it was big for him, but it affected you forever forever and those are the moments those are the moments that we need to have like that's my green you know that's my that's my motivating factor is those moments for me like those those little things that get you going money comes and goes we'll figure it out you know we'll we'll all figure this stuff out but dude Dude, dylan you know we obviously we obviously need our base we need, we need to make, you know, we need to make enough money to feed our families. But all the other stuff is like, let's, let's figure out those moments. Dude, right there, what you said, Dylan, like you said, money comes and goes. My homie, Mike Morosco, shout out Mike. He, he was the first person who literally, <clears throat> when I met him, he was like this no name filmer, just a stoner skater. We all smoke cigs. We're chilling. He ends up becoming like a filmer for Nipsey Hustle. He like, beca- you know, he did the Beyonce formation tour. He does like all these crazy music videos. He became this super success. And when I meant to go interview him for the podcast, he said exactly what you just said, Dylan. And he told me his story. He's like, money comes and goes, Kano. He's like, I had $6,000 in the bank. And he's like, I... Basically, he got like a thousand dollar budget to do his first music video for Juicy J. And he says to me, Amazing. Shouts out, Juicy J. Dude, shout out. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) Dude, dude, (sighs) dude. He told me at the end of that shoot, he had a hundred dollars left. And I might be like, it's it was definitely a hundred or a little bit less left in his bank account. Because he funded it. He's like, yo, you can't do a vid- like a good music video on $1,000. So he took his own personal money, drained his bank account, and then the ne- next thing he said to me, money comes and goes. And as he's telling me this, we're sitting at his house, very beautiful house. It's like four stories or something. And it just has all these crazy things from when like we were growing up and like all these crazy skate videos and all these things. But then he's like this amazingly successful videographer or cinematographer owns his own production company. Now I dude, I was, I used to stress so hard about money. And then he was like, dude, money comes and goes. You'll make it back just as quick as you lost it, but you have to keep going. And it's like, bro, yeah, I, like ugh. to hear you say that Dylan, I, it's, I, it's just amazing. I love I that. I really think that I, I just really think that, you know, we, we obviously get hung up in money. It's we obviously, we need it. I'm not gonna like be like some weird person that says I don't need money or something like that. But but we if you if you use that as your measuring stick, you're never gonna get there. Like your green, your your whatever should be that moment on the bridge. That was sick for you, right? Oh, a hundred percent. That was that was that was money <laughs> and. That's how I feel about my interactions with, with, with customers that if I, if I meet a customer, if I jack someone's day up and recently, this is something new for me, obviously is, you know, we're building a business or building multiple businesses and having people like Jay and people like that come up behind us is me being, you know, me offering opportunity for somebody else to grow 
that's my new thing. Like, that's just amazing for me. And that's my, my measuring stick on success right now. And, you know, we'll, we'll be, we'll be broke sometimes. We won't be broke sometimes. Hopefully it's not forever. I'd love to not have to think about money sometime. That'd be super cool. But it's never going to be my, like, (laughs) I don't want to make it like, like that, but it's just, it's it's never going to be my, like, it's never going to be my, you know, my measuring stick because I don't know. I don't know how many super rich people anyone has ever, ever, any of us have ever talked to, but I've talked to people who I thought were there. I've talked to people who I thought made it and they bitch about money. Right? They're like, damn, I got this. I got to deal with this. I got to deal with this thing. These bills. You know, not nobody that's super rich on my end, but like people that I thought had, were doing well in their lives and they just worried about money. Like, we're all going to worry about it. Like, we might as well have something else that we're, we're striving for. And money should be a really cool outcome of that. Like, I'm not allergic to it. I want it. Of course. Well, we all want to be. We all want to be <laughs> successful, monetarily successful, but it shouldn't be the focus because you're never going to make it if that's the focus. You get, focus on your passions. Focus on, you know, developing people, doing those kind of things. That's so. That's what's going to be the green for me. I I think that those people that say like money isn't shit, money's not important. Like, tell it to a parent, bro. Like, you're a dickhead if you say that. Like, for real. I'm watching my boss sit here with two kids, and I'm gonna tell him like, "Money's not important." Like, fuck that shit. Like, money's important. Money's oh, money's I fucking, important. I fucking need money, man. I need yeah, money. Yeah, dude. You need to get the green for son. sure. You need to get that green. Hey, like at the end of the day, money is literally what puts food in our belly. The second you don't have money, you probably don't have food, and there is ways to mitigate that situation. But generally speaking, if you have money, you have food. But making money like your driving factor and like if I work harder today, I'll get that extra $5. And if you don't get that $5, you're mad disappointed. Like that whole stress is kind of what I want to avoid in this. Like I understand I work in coffee. So if I want to be a millionaire, um, I need to make some better decisions career wise. No, not even. <laughs> like, no, nah, you're already made a better career choice, son. You're a roaster now. So, yo, like roasting. Oh, already is, no, no, no. I'm just saying like roasting is now on the path to making more paper that's you're on the right path just keep going Maybe i the i next know thing that is like to own a business for sure <laughs> uh, i know that if i'm sitting here not doing shit i ain't gonna make shit and exactly. if i'm sitting here doing five things one of those gonna hit and i'll be able to feed myself at the end of the night through that and uh, and again circling back to the harder i work the more dylan eats the more natalie eats the more i eat the more you eat yeah the more uh, everybody eats. my future kids eat and like i grew up you know, my family really didn't have money. My parents were working sometimes seven days a week and to watch them come home exhausted just to put food in my belly, to watch my parents work their fucking ass off all year so that on my birthday I could have this cake or, or whatever it is. Like I grew up an only child and to think that my parents worked that hard to support one human being, then to watch my boss do it times two is again, very motivating. And I'm 26 years old. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not far from parenthood myself, I'm sure. And so all of this is like, I'm looking to set myself up five years from now, 10 years from now, looking to set up my family, looking to set up my friends. And again, man, waking up every day, knowing that like me getting my money is my friends and family getting their money is one of the biggest motivations for me. I, dude, I love that. Like, fuck yeah. Keep going, bro. Like Like if I, if I came to this podcast, super fucked up and not caring at all, like, Compa, Clydesdale aren't going to benefit. You're not going to fucking benefit. I'd be super bummed. I'd, That's not. I'd want you to get fucked up with me. That's why. Of course, well, we didn't get <laughs> after this. No. Um, <laughs> taking this seriously and showing up and like trying and putting in effort and taking you seriously, taking your brand and your podcast seriously. Hopefully, listeners will come listen to this and be like, "This shit's fire." I should listen to four more episodes because clearly his guests take this seriously. Yeah, you're going to benefit. Yeah, 100%. Because I took this seriously. People yes. might go to combacoffeeroasters.com and they might check out our ah. website there. They might go to <laughs> at, Hawth- at Hawthorne Coffee on Instagram, at Baby Clydesdale on Instagram. Oh. Check me out. Give me a follow. Give me a like. Smash that follow button. Um, plug. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> plug, plug, plug. <laughs> no, but. Smash. Smash that like and subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> but just remember, like, to you, it might just be your fucking day job. It might just be your hobby. 
but what that turns into one day, you know what I mean? You take yourself seriously at what you love. Look at every professional skateboarder ever yeah. and tell them if they didn't take that seriously, they wouldn't be where they are today. hundred percent. And like, just have fun with what you do. Take it seriously. Put forth some effort. Well, I think, I mean, and just to bring it back to, I want to tie it all together right there is like what Dylan said about, it's not about the money. You know, uh, yeah, definitely want the money. I want the green. I want that. I guess it's blue cheese now. You know, not just green. Yeah, that's what the kids call it. Yeah, they call it blue cheese. Blue face hunted. As blue say. face. Blue face, baby. baby. Yeah, but like blue face where baby. I grew up, it was green. So I still stick with the green. In the Valley Joe? In the Valley. <laughs> Valley Joe, nah. Fremont, son. East Bay, oh, Nickel Dime. Don't forget, son. My bad, my bad. No, no, Nickel Dime. But, but. I grew up right outside of Oakland. Come on, G. We talked oh, I about thought, this. I thought you That's grew up in the Raider. Marin Headlands. Nah, hell nah. I ain't no <laughs> North Bay. I'm like, I feel madly insulted right now. You didn't grow Yo, up in the Marin Headlands? Nah, son. East Bay, nickel dime. There ain't no North Bay in this blood. Come on now. That's son. how you know I know nothing about yeah, okay. the Bay. Okay, like, we have to just we have to just like skip over that conversation. I might just have to edit that I'm out. I'm the right one now. in the I'm Raider hoodie. Offended. I know. I'm what the is one that? In the Raider You're too. talking to me about the North Bay? I'm like, East Bay. Is there even Decide. like a house in the Marin Headlands? Uh, is that even like a place? Really? Dude, that's where if you like work for Pandora, like a you live in North Bay, son. If, like, oh, for sure. Yeah, come on now. Like you got to have Rosa. money over there. There ain't no money coming from where I was coming from. But either way, I get sidetracked. I digress. But what I was going to say is that, you know, starting your own brand and doing your own thing, I'm only a couple months into it. I started, the company's been around officially two months, and then the company started in July. Caffeine and Green? Caffeine and Green, the actual business. Oh, for sure. Because the podcast is two years old. Yeah. But the actual business is roughly about six months. Two months selling stuff. But I love doing what I want to do without the worry about if it's going to make money. Yeah. You know, there's going to be people who are going to buy it regardless. And I appreciate every single one of you. Caffeine and Green Roasting.com. But... Mm. At the same time, to be able to do cool ass shit with my homegirl, Tyler Schaefer, to have her like put on the sunglasses, put on her t-shirt that I made for her. And then she's like lighting a blunt with a coffee bag. Like dude, my that post is hard. Dude, dude that's what I'm yeah. saying, son. I yeah. appreciate you, Dylan. I appreciate yeah. that right there. Yo, I I like Matt, I would I was like sitting there talking to her as I'm shooting, like, girl, you look so good. Stop. Like, yo, like telling her, like, Yo, I love this. You know, just like being encouraging and being hyped. And then, and then we got the next coffee that I got coming out. And this is not to take away from Tyler because it's still all about the Southside coffee right now. Mm-hmm. Cherry, chocolate, and caramel. But uh, <laughs> my homegirl, Leah, like, yo, she's one of the best people that I fucking know. She's fucking mad rad. She knows coffee. And we're going to do a completely different direction with it. But the fact of the matter is, is that like I'm doing these things because I want to help the people that I, that I love that I've, I want to do great things for because I, they've either helped me crazy or they're just awesome and people individually. I want to do these things because I want to do them for them. I those little moments, those little things at the same time, it's not even about the money. If we're going to make money, we're going to make money, but I'm so pumped on just doing these amazing things and the fact that my friends get to benefit from it. Yo, that's the little things, man. Like at the end of the day, like, yo, if I was going to die, like I'm going to give myself like three months. I'm not gonna say tomorrow, but if I was going to die in like three months and I looked back in those last couple seconds, like what I was able to do in those three months, I'd have been like, yo, I helped out my friends. Fuck it. This is chill. hundred percent. Like, and that's what it is. It's a, it's a hardcore cliche, and I know it's whatever, it's beaten into the ground, but no one ever, on their deathbed, no one ever said, I wish I worked more. People want, you wish you worked with people more, you wish you worked mm-hmm. for people, you had those connections. Mm-hmm. No one says, I wish I had more money, you know, whatever, it is what it is. We're, you want to make those connections, and that's what's, you know, doing that for your people for anybody it's just that's what it's about to circle back to like my gratitude too i think that i look at a lot of my friends and like you know whatever you'd be hanging out with your friends catching before covid i'm not hanging out with anybody right now don't worry um you begin to drink with people you begin you know smoke with people catching up with your friends 
maybe complain about their boss and they're like, oh, I work for this guy and he's such a piece of shit or, you know, I don't, I don't like the way that they, they make their moves and la la la. And you just don't generally like your boss, bro. It's been well over five years since I've had that feeling. It's been well over five years since I'm like, why would I do extra work? So-and-so is going to benefit and I don't fuck with homeboy anyways. Like why try? Like I'm so grateful that when I show up every day, I know that I'm going to benefit and everybody else is going to benefit. I like there ain't nobody making money off my hard work that I don't like. And so many people work for these big corporations where like the head dude is such a piece of shit. Like I was a federal employee and I was looking at all my bosses treat me like shit. And I was like, I don't fuck with y'all, man. Like this don't make sense to me. Like why would I take 10 extra steps so that y'all can make more money? I'm not going to see that. And then you guys treat me like shit. Like I hated that whole dynamic. And so the dynamic now of like not only liking my boss, wanting him to earn more, him being my friend, whether he's my boss or not. I am going to use that in my future so that when I'm whatever quote unquote boss or business owner or whatever fucking word you want to use for it, I know that the people I hire or the people I bring on my team, like I know how to treat them because mm-hmm. I know what that looks like. I know what it looks like to be treated unfairly and I know what it is like to be treated fairly. And luckily enough, I'm riding through a pandemic with the people that have treated me right every day for the past five years and uh, it's a big motivating factor i love that <clears throat> boys we've done an hour 33 holy sh- i'm hey. yeah i would oh, definitely i'm gonna yeah i mean w- in california <clears throat> for everybody who's listening who's not in california we have a 10 o'clock curfew so i it's about to be eight o'clock i generally try to stop it at Wait, an hour are we not half. allowed to be out at 10? Nah, hell no. If not, I'm like bro. driving home at 10, they're going to be like... If you're an essential worker, you're all right. But the, like, yo, you're supposed to be at home. I can't go and get fried chicken right now. Nah, you definitely can't get no fried chicken right now. <laughs> no, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> um, but, all right, boys, but I'll, we'll end it there. Um, any last words? Where can the people find you? Anything that you guys want to leave this. with the people? You can find us at hawthornecoffee.com. You can put in orders there at toasttab.com backslash Hawthorne Coffee for all your to-go order needs. You can also find us on Instagram at Hawthorne Coffee. Facebook, Hawthorne Coffee has a page. Combacoffeeroasters.com is where you can find and get shipped our roasted coffee. Also at Roasters on Instagram has a lot of our information on new things coming in that light. Baby Clydesdale can be bought at Hawthorne Coffee. can also be found <laughs> at Baby Clydesdale on Instagram. My name is at Big JSD. You can find me on Instagram. Thank you. I'm out. Jesus. <laughs> hey, that was unread. They, too, might, y'all. Have to, they, might, have to, they might have to slow that one down. That's, so they get that's everything. pure passion, y'all. That's Yo. what that was. Dylan, what about you? Kano, Kano, thank you for having us. You know, we love what you do. We love supporting our friends and people that are just crushing it in their in their industries. And, you know, you're doing it. So thank you for having us. Thank you for chatting with us for an hour and a half, man. That's, that's dope. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we love you. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate the opportunity Dude. for putting our name out there too, man. Thank My you. My guys, you... For Jay, you already know, G. Dylan, I'm so thankful, bro. Like, I really appreciate you coming on. And also, I want to tell you, I know, I don't know if Jay told you, but that, that cold brew that you, or the flash brew that you gave me, the, uh, when we were roasting together at the roastery the other day. Yeah. Dude, I was drinking it, and I didn't even see Jay pulled up next to me. I shit you not. This is no lie. <clears throat> he, he pulled up next to me, and I was drinking it. In traffic, it. yep. In traffic, and I like looked over and he was there and I was like, I was like, yo, son. I was like, did you roast this? He's like, yeah. I was like, yo, this is mad good. I was like, it's hella floral. Like giving him like a coffee, like a, uh, uh, what, what the fuck? It's like a, like a critique, but like screaming it from my car. And I was Hell like, yeah. this is so good. Hell so yeah. I just want to say thank you again for that, that flash brew. It was so good. And, um, yeah. I, J, uh, Jay, Dylan, Guys, I love so much the fact that you guys are crushing it, that you guys are surviving, that you're very open about how much it sucks more than it actually rules. But I love that you double down. I love you stay true to your business. And I love the fact that it's the small things that we can relate on. So, guys, the, the gratitude is definitely – I appreciate your gratitude, but the gratitude is definitely, like, very reciprocated on the other side of this table. Um, and it's not – this will not be the last – 
yeah, we're all we're all more similar than we are different. Let's mm-hmm. you know we're we're all here doing it the same same way. And if anybody let's listening crush, to let's this, crush it together. Anybody listening to this that has any questions on anything or just wants to talk to other business owners, wants to talk coffee, hot sauce, message us on any of the aforementioned Instagrams. If you see a website, you see an email, shoot us anything with any questions. You just want to talk to somebody in the business. Please, man, we're all here for each other. And let's keep that going. Everybody eating. Everybody eating. That's what I'm saying. And I'm eating a lot. (laughs) I want fried chicken, bro. I want shrimp and fried chicken. All right. All right, guys. Dylan, Jay, thank you guys again. Thank you. All right. Peace. Thank you, Kyle. Peace. Yes, thank you so much, guys. Everybody's eating. I love that. Thank you, Jay. Thank you so much, Dylan. I appreciate you guys coming on and just being a part of the show. And like always, guys, I would like to say thank you all so much to all you guys who are listening around the world who continue to support Caffeine and Green every week. I appreciate you guys so much. South America, Europe, Asia, Australia. United States. I see you guys. I appreciate you guys. Head over to caffeineandgreenroasting.com. Check out some coffee as well. The Issa Blend, the Southside Coffee from my homegirl, Tyler Schaefer, that pro coffee bag. That's right. And guys, I know it's getting a little crazy out there, so please you know, take care of each other. Be safe. Wear your mask. Just be nicer. It's the holidays, yo. I will see you guys next week. Peace!